Hey friends, it's your boy Big TCG Fan coming at you with another video and today we are going to be doing a Commander deck list. Today we are going to be doing Torok Dread Cantor. It is a mono black deck and as you can see he's a 2-1 with a kicker for 2 black. He has protection from might. Whenever opponent discards a card put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Torok Dead Cantor. Um, also, his uh, he enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, I can make an opponent discard two cards at random. So, him to Turok on him, basically. And so, what we have here, obviously, we got a whole bunch of swamps. And if I had it, I would, extras, I would have put an Urborg and a Cabal Coffers in here, obviously, but I don't. Uh, I like to use these cards right here. I'll put them in land slots. And so, that way, early game, if I'm stuck with them, I can put them in as a tapped land. But if not... Then later in game, I can use them for whatever they do. So, two target creature, you lose two life. Until end of turn, that creature gains when this creature dies, return to the battlefield, tapped under. This is great if I get Torok in, into play and someone tries to kill him. I boop, you know, plus it's a land on the other side. And then we have the other flip land one. This is called uh, Pilaka Predation. A target opponent reveals his hand. You choose a card from it, convert a mana three or greater, that player discards it. I mean, with Torok, you're discarding cards. All right, so we go back to the lands. We got Temple of the False God, obviously a great one. Um, this is the deck I really wish I had Urborg, uh, the Urborg land in it because of his cost with the kickers, three black basically. Uh, we got the uh, Polluted Mire and the Bar Baron Moor. These ones I just got in here because they're cycling lands. You'll draw these lands usually mid late game and oh, I'll just draw another card instead of a land drop I won't really need. Bajuka Bog with all the discarding. Um, in Commander, you'll see a lot of Reanimator decks are very common, so you definitely want to have this in a mono black deck, especially if you're not doing Reanimator much yourself, because then if someone copies it, they're wasting it on you. Buried Ruin. I do have some really good artifacts that if they get destroyed, I would like to get back, and you'll see a few of them, so this is what that's there for. It's just a utility land. I like putting in a lot of my Commanders. Haunted Fengraft, same exact thing, but for creatures, there's only a handful of creatures in here. So if I can get them back, I would be happy to do so. Uh, Witch's Cottage, this does the same thing for a creature. Uh, this thing only really sucks if you get it early game. Otherwise, it's a great little card. Uh, Maricoco, and part of the reason I have this in here is sometimes my opponents will just run out of cards to discard. So I can force them to draw a card only to make them then discard it. And then there's this one. This is easily one of the best cards in the whole deck. Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Yeah, I can tap it for mana, but I can pay two. Each player draws a card, then discards a card. Boom, 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 boom. Just making people discard cards like crazy. Then we get to our mana rocks. We got the obvious Soul Ring, Arcane Signet. As you will see, I really love to keep the mana rock cost down to two if possible. One or two. Uh, then we got Felwar Stone, Charcoal Diamond, Thought Vessel. Uh, just two mana. Commander Sphere. I like this one because you can sacrifice it to draw a card later in the game. Ebb and Fly, this is another just for two. I mean, I can turn it into a creature, but not likely to. Maybe for emergency situations. Everflowing Chalice, I usually just pay it for two to get a Mana Rock. Mindstone, early game Mana Rock, or I can use it for just an extra card draw later. And then this one right here, because my, I'm running Mono Black, I do have trouble with certain card types, um, enchantments, and artifacts. So this guy's here. If you get something that just makes your game difficult, you can put this down and utilize it. Uh, hopefully, with all the discard in this deck, you're not going to have to use this too often because you're making them discard things like crazy. And you'll see when we get through it, you'll see a lot of discard. Uh, Prismatic Lens, I like this one. I, don't, I can pinch, in a pinch, I can use it to siphon mana into black, but I just use it for a thing. And then a lot of mono black decks do tend to do damage to themselves, so gaining life can be critical. Now we get into the creatures. I love Grief because as you can see, uh, when he enters the battlefield, they reveal their hand. I choose another card and they discard it. So, plus, he's a 3-2 with Menace, so I use him for defense. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite creatures for Mono Black, the Rune Scarred Demon. Uh, he's a 6-6 he's a six, six flyer, but he's a demonic tutor on a stick. Can't beat that. Endless Cockroaches. Uh, this card right here, I just love it because... Uh, it's endless, so they have to exile it, otherwise I'll always have a 1-1 blocker coming back into play. Crypt Gas, I like him. His ex Extort for life gain is awesome, but the double black mana makes him amazing. 
So both of them there I will utilize to maximum capability. And then obviously when we're doing a lot of discarding, this creature right here, Terrigrid, the God of Fright, she's just too powerful not to use. I mean, her other side I think as well as a discard. Yeah, player loses smell unless they sacrifice a permanent or discard a card. So either one of them is good, but her front side is just too powerful with all the discard you're gonna see here. I'm literally just turning their deck into my deck with this card. Usually this, she gets killed pretty quickly. Uh, Grave Titan, uh, he's just too useful. Uh, he comes down, I get three bodies, and then if I swing, I get some more bodies, and he has Death Touch. So, And then obviously with all the discarding doing, Tiny Bones is just too amazing. Many of each 10 step, if an opponent discarded a card, which they will all the time, I get to draw a card and lose a life. That's where all the life gain, the few things of life gain I have come into play to neutralize that. And then obviously I just pay six mana and someone with no cards in their hand loses 10 life. And with this deck, there's going to be a lot of players with no cards in their hand. So if I just do this four times, it's game over for someone. Then we got the Sepulchral Primordial. I like this one because I'm making them discard a lot of cards. So I can turn their creature cards in their graveyard into my creature cards. And then this guy right here, he's amazing in this deck. Uh, he's flying 4-3. And what he does is when I hit them, uh, they have to discard a card at random. If they can't, I draw a card. So a lot of times I'll purposely use this guy mid to late game to be hitting the guy with no cards in his hand just to get that extra card draw advantage. But then again, if there is a guy with a card, I might swing on him too just to get that discard. Uh, I mean, opposition agent. What can I say? Your tutor is now my tutor. It's just, the card is too amazing not to put in a mono black deck. And then, of course, we have Zhao Dun, the one-eyed. I put this guy into every mono black deck I get. He's the only reanimation in this deck. He's got horsemanship. I can sacrifice him before combat to get any black card from my graveyard to my hand. He is an amazing card. He's probably, in my opinion, the best Portal Three Kingdoms commander of the lot. All right, next we have Divest. Uh, this is just a one black discard card. It only does artifact or creatures, but I get to choose it. So this is a great early game one to pop them with. Raven's Crime, this is probably the best discard in the lot because they get a choosing discard, but with Retrace, mid to late game, I'm re repeatedly casting this by pitching unnecessary lands that I'm drawing. So it's a really good double swing card for that purpose. Uh, Appetite for Brains, uh, they reveal a hand, I choose a card from it with converted mana, cost of four or greater, and exile. This is great early mid game because when some guy's about to use his finisher, I pull this bad boy out and go, nope, let me just discard that. And then, of course, you got him to Turok. I think that this card is mandatory in a Turok deck. Uh, plus, this is a good card. Oh, why don't you discard two cards? Remember, every time they're discarding a card, Turok is getting a 1-1 counter. Uh, that's one of the primary methodologies is I just smash you in the face with a massive uh, Turok. And if you have a white in your deck, you're not even blocking him. Uh, Hoden of Knight's Breach. Um, during my upkeep, I get to choose an opponent, make them discard one card. There's only one shrine in the deck. That's all I need. Every upkeep, someone's discarding a card. Torox's getting bigger, even if Torox's not in play. Uh, then we have uh, Blackmail. This is another discard card. They reveal three cards from the hand. I choose one discard. This is a mid to late game uh, murder for people. Then we got Sword of Feast and Famine. This is obviously the most powerful sword in the game, but what makes this especially amazing is uh, for me, outside of the untapped lands, is the discard. Once again, I put it on Torok, I'm smashing you in the face, and you're discarding a card, and Torok's getting bigger. Uh, next, we have Devour Intellect. This is another one mana cost uh, discard, but if I use treasure, which I don't have any way to generate treasure, I put this in merely because, oh, it's one black mana, you discard a card, Torok gets bigger. So it's a great card. Siphon Mind, I love this card, and I know a lot of people don't use it, but I like it, especially for this deck. Uh, Everybody discards a card, and I draw a card for all discards. This is part of my draw power. Next is Thoughtseize. I mean, you had to know this card was going to be in here, right? Uh, I choose an online card. They discard it. I lose two life. Totally worth it because, once again, Torak gets plus one, plus one. Then we have, of course, in Inquisition of Kozilek. Each player reveals their hand. You choose an online card, three or less, and they discard it. This card's greater early game, but, you know, you'll swing. Uh, Funeral Charm, this card is purely here for the choose and discard, but in a pinch, if there's something you could kill, you can kill. Or, uh, if I'm playing a mono black player, surprise, my 12-12 Tor double Torok with Infect smashes you in the face and you die because of Swamp Walk. So it's nice. You'll see where the Infect comes from in a moment. Uh, Mind Rake, this one's nice because, I mean, it's like not quite as good as him to Torok due to mana cost, 
except for that sweet, sweet overload cost. So for five mana, all of my opponents are discarding two cards. Pretty awesome. Then, of course, we have Duress. Uh, one black again. A target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card, a non-creature, non-land card from it. So it's very specific, and then they discard it. But still, once again. All right, so now I have Divorel, uh Rogue Shadow Mage. He's one of the two Planeswalkers in the deck. I only have him in here because each opponent's upkeep that player has one or fewer cards. They discard. Uh, he does two damage to them. And if I don't have any discard available, I could always use his minus one. I'll get three uses out of that. I prefer not to do that, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And then, of course, there's Liliana Vess. Uh, I put her in here um, for the primarily because she's five mana, obviously. Her top ability, target player discards a card. I'll actually use my tutors to search for her to put her in play ASAP because she guarantees every turn someone's discarding a card. Uh, the second ability is really nice, too. It's a vampiric tutor, but I prefer not to use that if I can avoid it. And then, obviously, I don't ever use the bottom one, but, I mean, I could... And then we have, now we get into the creature kill. We got Flay Essence. Uh, to me, exiling is very important. So I like exile creature planeswalker. I gain life equal to the number of counters on it. So this is probably better for planeswalkers, but you'll see things where you might need to exile. Deadly Rolock, I love this card uh, because if I have my commander out, it's free and it's just exile target creature. I love these exile ones because you're, a lot of times in commander, you're dealing with creatures that are almost impossible to remove. All right, next we have Murder. Um, this is... What I, I generally like to have a philosophy of targeted removal. Uh, I do do some board wipes, but I prefer targeted removal to get rid of things that impede my plan. Obviously, if you're dealing with massive swarms of guys, then you're going to want to wipe the board, and we'll get there. Uh, this is called Ghastly Demise. It's one black, uh, destroying our uh, target non-black creatures. So uh, this one right here won't do. usually won't do a lot, but sometimes in a pinch... I can just blow something up because you don't have a lot of creatures. And like I said, how I do like to have a board wipe, Damnation. I would get this card usually and I'll hold it in my hand until I absolutely have to use it. Let other people deal with mass swords of creatures. All right, once again, I'm a, like I said, I'm a big fan of Exiling. Ashes to Ashes is a very old card. I lose five life, but I get to um, remove two non-artifact creatures from the game. This could be critical. Oh, look, you're uh, Eldrazi you just cast. Oh, let me exile it, basically. All right, cast down. This is target non-black Non-legendary creature gets destroyed. Like I said, I prefer targeted if possible. Uh, we got feed the swarm, destroy target creature or enchantment. See, that's why I like this because black really struggles with enchantments. But now that I have this, I can actually deal with specific enchantments if I have to. And then obviously we have Freakas li uh, li Libation. But sh usually your opponents are not likely to sacrifice an enchantment or a creature you want them to. But if <laughs> a good start. And if you have a tear grid out, it's even better. All right, next we go to Murderous Cut. I like this one because of Delve. So, <coughs> excuse me. It's a little pricey, but usually I'm only paying one black because, like I said, I don't do a lot of reanimation. Uh, there are cards I'm discarding cards or whatever, and uh, I'll just mill exile a couple cards I don't really need to blow up a creature. All right, then we have Death's Approach. One black once again. It's an enchant creature. Um, so this is great when you're dealing with opponent mid to late game. They got a big creature out. They got a bunch of creatures in their graveyard. They throw down an Avacyn. I pay one black. I get rid of the Avacyn. Uh, Suffer the Past. This is like with all that discarding, sometimes you just need something to do a finisher for it. And this one right here is one of my finishers for a late game kill. And on top of that, I gain life as well. All right. This right here is one of my favorite cards in the deck. When I mentioned about getting artifacts back, this is what I was talking about. The Isochron Scepter, you know what it does. I exile a two or less sorcery uh, or an instant card from my hand, and then I can um, pay two to cast it. So I'll put like one of my instant speed discard, there's a few of them, and then that way I can just keep reputing it every turn. Or a creature kill, whatever I need. Oblivion's Hunger for two, see, and this is one of the ones I could use. And this one right here, what it does is it, gains, it gives my creature indestructible, and if there's a 1-1 one, one counter on it, I draw a card. So this card right here is amazing for Torment. Because if someone tries to kill Torment, I respond by giving him Indestructible and drawing a card. This is a card I would love to put on an Isochron Scepter because then I can keep doing it over and over again. Here's another one of my special finishers called Tainted Strike. Get 1 plus O and Infect. You will find when you're playing this deck that Torment gets to 10 power really quickly. I mean, he hits the board... With three, because if you're going to use the Torment's, uh, the Hymn to Tarak kicker on him, and he'll come out with three power, and then before long, all you got to do is get him to nine, then you swing and they think, oh, it's just whatever, nine damage, and you're like, nope, you're dead, game over. 
All right, now here I have a proxy. I have several demonic tutors. They're in other decks. Um, but this one right here is, just, I just thought it was really cool looking, so I just went ahead and bought it off of Etsy. Next, Diabolic Tutor. A little bit more pricey, but when you need to get what you need to get, you're willing to pay what you need to pay. Four mana, I get a card of my choice, put it in my hand. Then I got another proxy. This one's Vampiric Tutor. I do have other Vampiric Tutors. I think maybe one other one. I think I have the really cool one with a skull from uh, Commanders. It was full art. I think I opened it on this channel even. But I just thought this was really cool looking. You know, two to four land, put it on top, pay two life. Beautiful. Howling Mine. Like I said, when you get to mid-late game, people start running out of cards in your hands. So I got to force them to get cards in their hands so I can continue to make them discard. This one's one of my less popular options for it, but I will use it if I need to. And then, of course, here's the Temple Bell, which is the exact same thing, except I can tap it when I want. So if they still have cards, then I don't have to let them Howling Mine. So I prefer this one over Howling Mine. I can just do it as I go. It's a very nice card, and unfortunately, they only have is French. All right, here you go, the Rack. Now, this card is really good because when they're not having a lot of cards in their hand, when you get down to three, fewer than three, they do one damage for each fewer, and usually they're going to have zero, which means, boom, they're taking three. Very nice card, and so, very cool. All right, then I got more of that going on, Liliana's Caress. Uh, when they when they discard a card, they lose two life. And people are discarding a lot of cards when playing these, so they're losing a lot of life. And then we got Megram. Obviously, if you knew if I had that, you knew I was going to have Megram in there. Same thing, uh, discard a card, they do two damage. One's lose life, one's two damage. This one costs more. They both pretty much do the same thing. They both pay their way easily in this deck. All right, last but least, the last card I have is Lithoform Engine. I just love the flexibility. Uh, copy target... Um, Ability, activated or triggered ability you control. So like if I can, if I um put torment if I uh let's enter the battle. But yeah, you can just use it. My favorite one obviously is pay three to copy an instant of sorcery, and then all on top of that I can copy permanences that I cast as well. So late game I'm like oh well let me cast um, a grave type. Oh well let me copy that because you know I got all this extra mana not doing anything. So there you guys go. As I said, you can see we have Tormod the Dread Cantor. It's a really fun deck to play. You're dealing with people who are not used to discarding like as a common strategy, and that's all this guy does. And then obviously you see I have a couple other things. The goal, obviously, it takes a really skilled player because sometimes you have to focus what you're making them discard because if you're not, then you're going to end up really hurting. And it's really cool though because like all of my testing and games I played with it, my opponents end up with empty hands really fast, which is pretty sweet. It's a fun deck to play. I highly recommend it. So there you guys go. This concludes my video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, share if you can. Peace out.